All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, Apparition OAT Jackie and Void Dweller. Welcome to the grand finale of Seabed. I am absolutely fucking terrified. <laughs> Honestly, I was just finished crying over a, a beautiful uh, Lapland, Texas uh, shipping video that... And now I'm gonna cry again over some more Yuri. <laughs> oh my god. I just... I'm really terrified. Last time, we learned a lot about Takako and Zajiko and their past. And basically, we do know that uh, Takako's world was indeed created by Zajiko. We have no idea how she was capable of doing this. But Takako gained a lot, but not all, of her memories back. Uh, through this uh, revelation in the dream world as Sajiko is heading back home. And it looked like, based on the text, that uh, Sajiko might be in the dream world right now as well. I don't know. And uh, we also have to know more about what exactly Narasaki's role is and, oh yeah, Kozue. How does Kozue fit into all this? She is the biggest mystery. <sighs> okay, you guys. I... Oh, God. I'm just... <sighs> I just want them to be together. I really, really just want them to be together. Seriously. Let's get back into it for the last time. Hello, Guppy Force. I hope I'm ready too. Takako is going to confront Narasaki. I descended the spiral staircase in a hurry. As I emerged into the lobby, I nearly crashed into Narasaki, who was standing in front of the phone. Oh, before I continue, I had a bit of a scare right before I started this stream. Uh, my internet had gone down for a full 10 minutes and I was really sweating bullets, but it came back up. So if I cut out again, I have my phone right here, ready to, um, to, to piggyback on to the 4G. So, don't panic. I'll just try to get up, back up as soon as possible. If it goes down. If it goes down. Yeah. Norisaki noticed me and turned around. <laughs> Did you run, a, run into a polar bear upstairs or something? Her hand was resting on the phone's receiver. Have you finished your walk yet? Oh, have you finished your walk yet? I was about to leave. I want to ask you something about what we, we discussed earlier. Or can't you even spare a minute? Narasaki glanced at the stained glass on the door rather than the clock. I can stay while it's still bright outside. I'd rather not drive through the mountain roads in the dark, you know. So, what's bothering you? As if you don't know. Sachiko, you implied you didn't know her. But you do, don't you? What makes you think that? Narasaki shrugged. I remembered. Narasaki is the name of the doll Sachiko used to play with. And you look a lot like it, too. 
And this same Narasaki sent Sachiko's diary to me. You can't be unrelated. It wouldn't make sense. Narasaki slowly inhaled a breath, then looked at the floor. I couldn't quite make out her face in the already dimly lit lobby. Her expression seemingly teetered between relief and exasperation, but I couldn't be sure. You are indeed corrupt. I do know her. Why did you act like you didn't? I wanted you to remember it by yourself. You still could have said something. Narasaki shook her head. Uh, there would have been no point if you couldn't remember her yourself. If anything I had said had caused you to remember something, it would have ended up distorted by my subjective point of view. It wouldn't be your genuine memory, and these kinds of uncertain things are the first to be taken away by your illness. Really? Your Sachiko and my Sachiko are different. I'm guessing she means the Sachiko that they picture in their head. In order to remember your own Sachiko, you had to recall your memories by yourself. That's why I avoided saying anything about her. All I could do was unobtrusively guide you toward the key to your memories. I understood what she was trying to say. Even back when I read the diary, there were times I wasn't entirely sure if those were really my memories or just my imagination. And when I started thinking like that, I'd grow anxious and uncertain. Once you forget something for good, you can't be sure about it anymore. Thanks to you, I remembered something very important. However, some of the stuff I remembered is pretty goddamn crazy, which is why I'm so stumped right now. Please, Narasaki, explain this. Narasaki spoke up while I was trying to look for a better way to articulate my thoughts. What did you remember, exactly? I'm pretty sure now I remember more or less everything about our life together. But those memories don't explain why I'm here. Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Okay, God, we're finally gonna get it. Okay. It's almost like I have two different selves. Each with his own separate set of memories. I feel like the time I spent living with Sajika was akin to a dream that felt very real. Narasaki calmly listened to my rambling. Maybe you really don't know her. Oh, that's, uh, Takako. Maybe you really don't know her. For all I know, she could just be a figment of my imagination. Finding it hard to believe? Narasaki asked. But if you remember it remember that much, we can always talk about it later. Narasaki turned back to the phone. Oh my god. She picked up the receiver and pushed a coin into the slot. Maybe she's still there. She said while turning the dial. I drew closer to the phone. Narasaki held out the receiver in front of me. When I took it and pressed it against my ear, I could hear a long beep. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. They're gonna talk through the dimensions. Oh my god. Oh my god. Last chapter. Four leaf clover. You're right, Guppy Force. Imagine if I had stopped the stream here last time. <laughs> I finished my conversation with Narasaki and sat down on the stool by the phone to catch my breath. After a couple of minutes, I stood up and was about to head to the spiral staircase when the phone started ringing again. Oh my god. I thought it was either Narasaki, having forgotten to tell me something, or some actual hotel business this time. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
Oh my god, oh my god. After a few moments of hesitation, I picked up the receiver. Hello? It wasn't Narasaki's voice that reached me from the other end of the line. It was an even more familiar one. A voice I had listened to for most of my life. Togako. It's been a while, Sachi. The abruptness of her call rendered my mind completely blank. It was most likely another one of my hallucinations, but there was something different about this one. Oh, thank God. And we get a new music track. Up until now, my head was always would always cloud over whenever Takako appeared, making me go through the motions as though in a lucid dream. <laughs> This time, however, I felt no different from usual. My mind was serene as a lake. I could hear her voice clearly through the receiver. Where are you calling me from? A sanatorium. A sanatorium? Yeah. I've kind of been having trouble remembering things lately. <laughs> I always knew you were just one step away from dementia. <laughs> Maybe I was. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I heard Daka go chuckle on the other end of the line. Well, it's not like forgetting things is anything new to you. <laughs> Remember the time you mixed up your shoes back in school? I do. I accidentally put on my friend's shoes after class in the AV room. That's still within the scope of reason. But after that, you forgot to change them before leaving school and only realized what you were wearing when you got home. Yeah, I promptly changed the sandals and went outside to hang with you, but then my sister panicked when she got home and found unfamiliar shoes with someone else's name in the lobby, and the neighbors called the police. <laughs> I was in for a shock when I got home and found a police car in front of our place. I had to explain the situation, and then the policeman who was checking my room for signs of burglary gave me such an exasperated look, there's no way I'll forget it until I die. Your memory was pretty bad even back in those days. And that old episode made a smile naturally form on my lips. That's not entirely right. When I was younger, I I just easily get obsessed with one thing or the other and forgot about everything else. And that was true. But it didn't change the fact that she was among the most forgetful people I've ever met in my life. That said, there was little point in pursuing the subject any further at this point. A sanatorium sounds so not like you. Aren't you bored there? I'm not. If anything, this place is unlike any other. I'm free to do almost anything I want, so I'm actually having loads of fun here. <sighs> and how do you feel? Not bad. I see. We both fell silent for a moment. I realized I kept asking questions without giving Takako the chance to speak up. So this time I paused and waited for Takako. I heard her voice again just before the silence could grow awkward. I was forgetful, I admit that, but 
That's why you were always such a lifesaver for me. You diligently remembered things in my stead. My lips unconsciously formed into a smile again. Well, as long as you understand. Where are you now, Saji? I'm staying at a friend's mansion. To recuperate. Recuperate? Are you also sick? I contemplated explaining everything that had happened to me thus far. However, I couldn't find the right words. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. It would have taken a long time to explain, and I want to speak to her about other things. I see, she said. How are you doing lately? She added after a pause. I've wanted to talk to you for the longest time. Me too. I've wanted to see you. <laughs> we then talked about our past. About the trips we took together. The island in the far south. The countries in the west. Our experiences on the long bridge. We discussed everything from our days in the kindergarten to when we quit our jobs and went independent. There were a few details I forgot, but Takako filled in the blanks for me. And I did the same for her. I closed my eyes and gazed at the lucid memories on the back of my eyelids. Those days came back to me. And we're now about to disappear again. No! Oh, God. After we finished talking about the time we snuck into a pool at night, Takako said that her coins were about to run out. No! She was on her last one. I slowly opened my eyes. Those were happy days. Not were. We still have plenty more ahead of us. Sachiko. I heard Takako whisper my name under her breath before falling silent. Takako. I whispered her name too. I suppose this is goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye, Sachi. I listened to the beefing sound for a while. I placed the receiver back into its place with a loud clang. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, that can't be the end. We gotta know, there's so much more that's gotta be answered. There's gotta be more. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Takako said there are more, right? Does she have a plan? Does Takako have a plan? Please tell me Takako has a plan. Oh god, oh god. Oh god, oh god. And that was so much, that was so much hope that Sachiko said it was different from her hallucinations. Okay, so this Takako is real. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, please. <gasps> Narasaki, are you gonna do something to help? Oh god. Oh my god. God, oh god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And the, the chat froze again, didn't it?
I listened to the sound of our printer working quietly in the background. Suddenly, I let out an electronic beep before stopping completely motionless. Hello. Again. After so long. Oh, it stopped. Fumi said in front of the machine. Inukai, this thing swallowed my papers again. Fumi turned to Inukai, who was still working at his desk. He silently, silently stood up, walked over to the printer and kneeled down in front of it to open its tray. I hope so, Void Dweller. I thought it was a steal when we got it from the neighboring office for almost nothing, but it keeps getting stuck all the time. To be honest, you really should know how to fix this by yourself. Inuka removed the cover from the back of the machine and pulled out a crumpled piece of paper. He pushed a button and the calm printing noise resumed. I don't want to get my hands dirty. Inukai glanced at his fingers, now covered in cyan-colored dye. What? <laughs> Frowning, he pulled out a handkerchief from his back pocket and began wiping off his fingers. The handkerchief had a picture of a cute sheep on it. You can endure that much, can't you? It still beats going next door to beg every time you need to print something. Jeez Louise, okay, fine. Whatever. There was a knock on the door as Inukai returned to his seat. Excuse me. Oh my god. Oh my god, if this is Takako, oh my god. Oh my god. Please be Takako. If this is Takako, oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. If this is Takako, I am going to lose it. Oh, we, we knew this was the last last stream, Boy Dweller. Oh my god. The windows of our beige-colored door troubled in response to the knock. Yes? Oh, yes? Fumi moved closer to see what was going on. I paused and shifted my gaze to the door. Okay, it's some rando. Damn it! I'm sorry for the intrusion, but I was wondering if Miss Mizuno was currently present. Or it's still, who knows? Maybe. I don't know. Fumi was speaking to someone on the other side of the door. Yes, just give me a moment. A long haired woman. I met her a long-haired, familiar-looking woman standing at the door. It is her. It's Nanai, okay. Nanai, a massive Boston bag at her feet, waved at me as her eyes met. Hey, y'all. I came to hang over to hang out. Damn it. Where is Takako? Okay, back to Takako's world. Okay, and it's from Narasaki's perspective. Okay, back here. Takako put the receiver down and watched the phone in silence for a while before turning around to face me. She sounded like she was doing even better than I thought. She said with a broad smile. The light from the stained glass window had moved deeper into the room. After a few moments of silence, Takako parted her lips again. The last time I saw her was when we were in bed together. I have no recollection of waking up the next morning. Is this a dream? Or the world after death? I remembered that night very well. Oh no. 
Taka who suffered from a very complicated disease and spent months in a hospital bed. But after it became clear that there was nothing that could be done to cure her, Sachiko brought her back home. Oh no! No, 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 no! Oh, that's absolutely true, Void Dweller. No! Akako passed away about a month after that. Achiko nursed Akako during that entire time. As her condition grew worse, she kept crashing in her bed at night. Every time that happened, Sachiko would visit her the sedative she got at the hospital to make her sleep. Pain and her fever rarely allowed Takuko to remain conscious, but during her fake moments of awareness, she'd always say Sachiko's name. <laughs> and Sachiko would always answer her. Two days before her death, Talgo reigned consciousness for slightly longer than usual and spent a brief time talking with Sachiko. <laughs> they went over random episodes ranging from their childhood to their adult life, the fun they had together, what they felt and thought at the time. <laughs> they discussed every single thing with no reservations, down to the tiniest detail. Takako gave Sajiko a long passionate hug and said goodbye. <laughs> At this point, that episode remained only in my memories. <laughs> <laughs>
My nose is all stuffed up. Oh god. God, I don't know, my nose is all stuffed up. No, Void Dweller, Takako was like the person, like the person I, she was a lot like the person I'm married to, so. Maybe if y'all didn't miss that when I said it earlier, that's might have to do with why I'm acting the way I am right now. I'm very sorry. Hold on, I just, my nose is really stuffed up. Oh, you probably don't want to hear me blowing my nose. Let me just mute the microphone for a bit. Okay, I, that's the thing when I cry a lot, is, hello Dimitri, by the way, welcome to the street. I just, my nose gets really stuffed up, <laughs> jeez, and it gets hard for me to talk properly. So, hold on just one more second. Hi. Okay. All right. I'm back. I put my earphones in. I. Oh God. 
Hey, Seabed, you wanted to fucking kill me many times over? I wonder if this is what it feels like, like an Umineko to be killed and brought back to life over and over and over again. Because that's kind of how I'm feeling. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> oh my god, I just... <sighs> okay. I guess you could think of it like that. But it doesn't really matter whether this is a dream or anything else. You exist here all the same. And that was of utmost importance to Sachiko. I stuck my hands into my coat's pockets. The lobby had grown chilly as the sun began to set. Doesn't look like I've got much time. Is there anything else you want to know? Of course. There's a whole lot of things I don't understand. Okay, please, Narasaki, please explain. There's a thing or two I still don't understand myself, but I guess I can share with you what I do know. So, oh, oh God, don't do this to me again. So if I could speak with Sachiko, could I also meet her somehow? Please don't do this to me again! Your memories have returned. You should know what happened. Then how come I could speak to her through that phone? This was a special occasion. There's a way to connect both worlds, but it's not good for Sachiko herself. But wasn't this world collapsing? Normal people don't talk to voices in their head. I'd say it's about time to put an end to it. <sighs> Takako said nothing and shifted her gaze toward the ceiling. <sighs> then tell me about yourself. You sent me Sachiko's diary and explained how my illness worked. <laughs> so I assume it was no coincidence you handed me those keys either. What exactly are you trying to accomplish? That wasn't a bad question. <laughs> my objective was to recover Takako's memories. Or in other words, to combine the scattered and chaotic remnants of Sajiko's memories of Takako into one <sniffs> continuous fold. I wouldn't have handed Takako the keys if the diary was the only thing that kept her memories together. And I couldn't have been sure she would be able to return from that cave, much less with her memories recovered once I did. <sniffs> But she ended up living up to my expectations and beyond. It was all to treat the memory illness. But why would you go so far to do it? Because that's my role. Takako dropped her shoulders with a puzzled look on her face. How could she get sick if she's dead? I glanced at the clock while she was thinking about her next question. The old man I met at the cafe the other day said it would rain tonight. He, could, he said he could tell her from how the clouds moved about the sea. I tried checking the sky afterwards myself. 
but it didn't make much sense to me. I got to talk about toward the main subject. Do you think you could do a favor for me? Takako returned her gaze to me. Of course. You have no idea how grateful I am for everything you did today. I'm glad to hear that. Anyway, I want you to write your diary in the notebook I sent you, if possible. I'm already writing it in my own notebook, Takako said with a puzzled expression. I want the diary in Sajiko's notebook to be a little different. It should be a special diary, I guess. I'd like you to write about things from a broader perspective, not just things that pertain to you personally. Could you be more specific? Like when there are special events at the sanatorium. I imagine you'll all be going to visit the shrine at the start of the year. I'd like you to make a record of what the other people there have said or done. It should be something fun if possible. Naturally, you don't need to write in this diary every day. Is Sachiko going to be able to see the diary? How often do you want me to write then? A couple times a year would be just fine. That sounds easy. What's the point of it, though? It'll help to block the memory illness from advancing. Is the diary I'm writing now not enough for that? Unfortunately, it's not perfect, and you'll still end up forgetting things here and there. You said I should take good care of that notebook when we spoke in the night duty room. Is it, like, special in some way? That notebook is an embodiment of memories. What do you mean? I mean it literally. Your notebook, as well as the ones belonging to the other patients in here, have the same function. That's why they're so important. There are a few pages torn out from that notebook. Do you know why? I shrugged. Takako slightly cocked her head to the side. Why would anyone tear up something that important? She asked. <laughs> Sorry. I stood up from the school and stool and straightened my jacket. Are you already going? I'm wanting to spend the night here. We have more than enough empty rooms. I have a hotel room booked. Besides, there's still something I need to do. I see. Takako followed me up to my car. She kept her arms crossed, seemingly deep in thought. She finally spoke up when I opened the car's door. Um, Narasaki? What is it? You said our notebooks are essentially our memories. So what about the one you sent? Who knows? It's not yours, is it? <laughs> you have an active imagination. Then again, that's hardly surprising in your line of work. I climbed into the car and leaned back in the seat. Will you come visit some other time? There's still a lot of things I'd like to ask you. I'll make sure to drop by if I get the chance, I said before closing the door. I fastened my seatbelt and ignited the engine. Takako followed my car up to the road beyond the sanatorium gate. She kept waving at me until she disappeared from the rearview mirror. Is this still Narasaki? I checked in right before a lockup time and crashed into bed as soon as I entered my room. 
This could be Takako or Narasaki. I'm not sure who it is. Exactly, Void Dweller. She's still walking around in a physical world. It's definitely so... Oh, God. It's Narasaki. Thanks, Guppy Force. I ended up sleeping until noon the next day. I woke up one point at my usual time and thought about going to get breakfast. But I ended up changing my mind and instead fell back to sleep. I had nothing to do in the morning anyway. After all, I'd already finished most of my work. When I opened my eyes, it was already past noon. I slowly climbed out of bed, got dressed, and left the hotel. I spotted a restaurant designed like a ship as I made my way through the shopping district. I decided to drop in and have lunch there. I killed some time by reading the newspaper and listening to the radio. A young man in a suit and a middle-aged man wearing a knit cap entered the restaurant during that period. The young man finished the lunch he ordered and promptly left the restaurant. As for the man wearing the knit cap, he spent the afternoon reading a newspaper, leaving only when the sun began to set. When I was the only customer left, I spent some time having small talk with the waiter. After hearing the same story about the fishing grounds I'd heard from Takako the next day, I finally left the restaurant myself, pocketing a box of matches they were handing out as an advertisement on my way out. I continued in the direction of the sea. As I walked along the long breakwater, I spotted some stairs leading down to the beach. A bit of sand found it way into my shoes as I got down, but I didn't mind. I spotted something shining in the sand. Picking it up, I realized it was a sea glass Takako showed me earlier. I looked around to find some other beads, green and blue, scattered all across the beach. Some of them had yet to get their edges fully chipped away by the sea. I picked one bead up and held it against the sun. It lit up in red. I feel like it'd be a waste to throw it away, so I slid it in my pocket. I walked along the beach until I reached the driftwood I'd previously only seen in the far distance when I began my journey. I glanced back at the town. The steps I took to the beach now looked tiny in the distance. I wonder where she's going. Okay, so she crossed between worlds, I guess. I spent some time looking at the mountain, but I couldn't find the sanatorium. I lowered myself on the driftwood and watched the orange sunset for a while, giving my exhausted legs some time to, re to rest. I prodded the sand with my heels, absentmindedly digging a hole underneath myself. I pulled out a file from my bag and removed a couple of papers from it. Sorry. Yep. We knew that she meant she tore out the pages. Yep. It was a medical record I pocketed at the consultation room, along with a few pages that were torn from the notebook Takako mentioned. I removed the pages from the medical record with a paper cutting knife I found at the hotel. I ran my eyes all over them one last time. The first page had a date written in a child's hand. Though it looked like a diary, the notebook went into detail about an illness and its treatment. It was a record of the first time I played doctor with Sachiko back in kindergarten. Below the text, there was a crayon picture of Narasaki investigating Doctor's belly. Looking at it always made me remember the good old days. I couldn't help but smile. I pulled out a matchbox from my pocket and lit, lit up a match. The flame was quickly extinguished by the wind, but I managed to su successfully light another one. I guided the little flame to the page. It spread against the white surface. 
burning the words in the picture. When it became too hot to hold, I let it fall into the hole I dug earlier. I burned one page after another. Oh God, she's getting rid of herself. Oh no. Oh no, she's going back to the future style. Oh my God. When I had only two pages left, I realized my hand had gotten transparent. Oh my God. It looked exactly like what happened to my friends back at the clinic. The orange light of the sun illuminated me like it did the sea glass mere moments before. I looked at my old friends and the picture of that talk ago said it was empty. I remembered she asked me what I was trying to do and I read the last page. <laughs> the only thing written on it was the phrase, I'm sorry. I swear, you guys, I have not read this before. I fucking swear. I fucking swear I have not read this before. I, I swear, I know how this looks. I swear. I have not read this before. Jeez. It was the last thing Sachiko said to Takako. as well as one of the parts for the I erased. I crossed my arms and watched the redness of the page burn inside the hole. And everything turned to ash. I could feel myself getting lighter. Hello, Chaos Shield. Welcome to the street. I wasn't sure if it was my body or my mind, but it didn't feel as bad as I thought it would. After confirming that every page was burned beyond recognition, I threw the rest of the files in my bag into the campfire I made on the sand. I watched as the flames swallowed all the documents and the pictures attached to them. I stuck my hands in my pockets to realize I had sea glass in both of them. I took them out and compared the one I got from Takako to the one I found. The thing sparkled in red, yellow, and blue, illuminating the sand below them. As the fire continued to soundlessly burn, I began to feel slightly lightheaded, almost as if I was somewhat tipsy. As an experiment, I tried remembering something old from the clinic. There was a little Sajiko, a rabbit, and a bear in the room. Sajiko was drawing a picture of everyone. Back in those days, Takako often came over to play as well. Although I could remember the rabbit and the bear, their names eluded me. That made me feel a bit sad. I lay down on the driftwood in case I might end up losing, losing consciousness.
as if to follow the course of the setting sun. I sluggishly began closing my eyelids and tried thinking about something pleasant. After a while, I lost the sensation of my body. Oh my god. Hibiki. A voice reverberated in my head like a bubble rising from the ocean. I can't sleep. I heard the sound of rustling clothes, along with the young Sachiko's voice. You'll fall asleep sooner or later if you keep your eyes closed. It's boring to stay still. Just pretend you're fishing. I've never fished in my life. Try imagining you're floating in the middle of the sea, under the moonlight. How far is that from land? Very far. But you won't sink, so you have nothing to worry about. And what then? Sorry. They floated in the middle of the ocean, swaying in the waves like a fishing rod string as he watched the night sky. The sky above was without clouds, glaring a clear view of the moon and the stars. The calm water reflected the stars, making me feel almost like I was floating in outer space. What then? What then? I'm sorry. Then you can watch the stars. Huh? That's it. If I do that for long enough, a large... If I do that for long enough, a large fish will eventually rise from the depths and swim by my back over and over again. Then she'll open her big mouth and swallow me whole. Huh. And at that point, you'll already be asleep. After a few moments, the characteristically rhythmic breathing of undisturbed sleep reached my ears. The calm waves caressed my cheeks as I floated in the darkness. I could already feel the presence of a big fish underneath me. I was then swallowed by the waves. I started to feel cold as I descended into the bottomless void. I could no longer move. I felt neither my eyes nor my fingers. I simply kept sinking deeper and deeper. <laughs> I was going down to the very bottom. Hiviki. I opened my eyes, reacting to that small, high-pitched voice. The dark waves drew away from me, and before I knew it, I was back on the beach again. A small girl ran toward me. Seizing my shoulders, she lifted my body from the driftwood. I finally found you. The young Sajiko was looking straight at me. What are you doing here? Oh my god. Did they just gigabrain something here? Don't give me more hope. Please don't give me more hope. Oh my god. I was looking for you. Takako told me everything. I see. My head hurt a little as I turned my neck. That's because he slept in a weird place like this, said Sachiko upon noticing me wince. I do want to know what Kozue is, yes.
Zajiko took my hand as I stood up and brushed the sand off my hair and clothes. It'll be dark soon. We gotta hurry, she said. I do want to know what Kozue is. That's, that's pretty much the last remaining mystery. Are you fucking serious? Oh my god! What?! What?! How?! How?! My God. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand it either, Void Dweller. Let's keep reading. It'll be dark soon. We've got to hurry, she said. I shook my still drowsy head and looked at her. She pulled me forward. I guess. Let's go. Oh my god. So, what kind of patient did you cure this time? Oh, I'll tell you once we get back to the clinic. We should grab something to eat on our way back. Eh, that sounds good. I'd like some crepes. You okay with the usual stand by the station? Of course. Probably because she was an edgy teenager. <laughs> Void dweller. Let's go then. Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. We gotta see what's gonna happen. Oh my god. What the fuck just happened here? I'm not bothering y'all, am I? Tell me if I am and I'll go straight to my hotel right away. Nana I fixed her slightly disheveled hair with one hand as she sat on the sofa in the reception room. Fumi brought a tray with tea and snacks and began lining them, on, them up on the table. She made a friendly smile when Nana greeted her, then returned to the office. Now, was that Miss Fumi? She cast a weary look at the door through which Fumi left. I nodded. I said I had time on weekends, but I didn't expect her to come so early. Oh, shucks. Your office was next to the station, so I figured I'd drop by on my way to the hotel. I want to see where y'all work. I would have come to meet you if you had told me. Nah, I already feel plenty awkward for bothering y'all at work. Oh, this is Monica, isn't it? And with rice cake, too. I love these things. Nana I tore the wrapping off one of the snacks Fumi brought and began happily chewing on it. As she finished one, she began opening another. Her eyes wandered to a poster on the wall opposite of her. Did y'all draw that? Yes. The other one was done by one of my co-workers, though. Are those your posters, too? Can I have a look? She pointed at a rolled-up poster lying on the cabinet. If you want to. Woo! Some of these are pretty darn cool. I really like this one. She showed me a blue poster with dolphins and coral reefs in the background. How long does it take to make one? About a week. <sighs> <sighs> oh, 
I just, uh, that, that gives something about Kozue. I just want to know how Kozue can exist as a physical being in Sachiko's world. And, like, because that explains why she's in Takako's world, but it doesn't explain how she's in Sachiko's world. I want to learn more about her. I see. Your job sounds kind of hard. I can't deny that, but I like it. Ever since I was little, I've never been good at art. I like to draw, but it all looked like crap. I know that feeling. <laughs> Jeez. So it feels kind of overwhelming to meet a person who can actually create something out of, of actual worth. Only a handful of things are really worth anything, though. Really? For example? I'm not sure. But in my case, only the time I spent with her remains forever ingrained in my mind. It fills me with strength, no matter how tough things get. It helped me find the correct path in my life. So next time, I'd want to convey those feelings and be the one to support someone else. I see. Nana pulled out a few, pamphlet, few pamphlets from her bag. Many of them had scenic pictures, the kind you usually see at tourism agencies. Hey, um, I've never really been here before, so y'all think you show, could show me around a bit over the weekend? I picked up one of the pamphlets and briefly inspected it. I doubt you'll have time for everything listed in here. Now, what would y'all recommend, then? How about this? Mixed in with all the pamphlets describing local areas, there was one with overseas destinations. I'm going overseas again next week to pick up some new furniture. A cruise along in the Mediterranean Sea? How long of a trip are we talking about? Oh, it should take about a month, I reckon. And what about your inn? Oh, it's not like we'd get many guests anyway. Anna can handle it all by herself. Huh. If I find an interesting postcard, I'll make sure to send it to you. I prefer something with beautiful scenery. I was just thinking about changing the postcards. I have friends about my sink. The ship behind me sounded a horn as I took shook Sanai's hand. Well then, I'll see you sometime later, I guess. Au revoir. The clerk responsible for the gates urged me to board. I'm sorry. May you have a good trip. Oh, I'm sorry. And the, the clerk said, May you have a good trip. I handed him my ticket and ascended to the deck. A shame Kozue didn't come to see us off. I turned to Mayako who stood by me on the ship. Well, it's not like we're going to be away for that long. I suppose so. We walked along. We walked along the deck watching the receding port town. Is that our sanatorium? I honestly doubt you can see it from here. No, that's definitely it. Look, there's a red building over there. I can't see anything. I'm pretty sure it's there. 
We should contact the others the night we come back and tell them to turn on all the lights. That way we'll be able to judge whether or not it's really there, I'm sure. I really doubt Kozue would want to do all that for a stupid thing like this. I guess so. Still. Oh, still, this whole business about the trip came out of nowhere from you. Said Mayuko, holding down her hair. Hey, we made a promise, didn't we? What promise? <laughs> a fierce wind blew across the deck, drowning out our voices. I don't think this will be the last place I'll take you to. I almost cannot wait. Oh my god, wait. It's so close to the Uminako, you're. Oh my god. Yeah, that's CG. Oh wow. I think that's my. I think that has to be probably. My... I think that's my favorite CG right there. That one. The, the... There are so many good ones, but I loved that one the most, I think. <laughs> I don't know if there's a post credit scene. I, I should be saying something. I'm just, I'm just kind of overwhelmed a bit. I just, I, 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 I do wonder if there's a post credit scene. I'm just looking at the CGs right now. I'm not even reading the names. I'm just really, I am just really, really. Oh, it, it unlo unlocks tips. There's some more tips. Okay. Thank you, Dimitri. I, I'm just really, really overwhelmed right now. Check out the project planning there in the first game, so, okay. Sure. Chips. I guess so, Void Dweller. Oh my god, I didn't see it, Guppy Force. I was just totally overwhelmed. Jackie's name was in the credits. Oh, that is amazing. Holy shit. Wow. Oh my god. 
Thank you, Tagiever. I'm sorry. I just couldn't. I, I was just. I was just really just. <laughs> you didn't hide, Jaggy. <laughs> Although the state I'm in is partially your fault. <laughs> I gotta make a joke or else I just. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Extra CGs have been added to the library. <laughs> I did. I'm sorry. I wasn't. I was. I couldn't pay attention to the credits. I'm just too overwhelmed. I agree, apparition. Yeah, like if, if I, like it was very, very good, like mind-blowingly sad, but very good. Yes. Now I was going through the CG gallery before, and uh, I noticed that there were a huge amount of blank spots at the end that couldn't possibly. Be like they couldn't possibly be all the CGs left because there there were there were way too many so yeah they said extra CGs were unlocked so they're probably concept art I bet wow there's still some left I guess they're from the tips okay I'll read the tips first. Okay, I see. Yep. There's concept art here and like about pretty much all the characters. Okay. Okay. Yep, this is, there's only one tip, it seems. <laughs> Tips four, in mercy, a holiday at the sanatorium. Yeah, here we go. I switched the tongs to my left hand and pressed the sweat off my forehead with my right. The vast blue sea extended under the blue sky as far as the eye could see. I could feel the fierce sunlight and the heat of the reddening charcoal against my skin. Is it, is it working? Oh, is it working? Mayako took a peek inside the grill. The charcoal is finally starting to glow. I said as I continued to fan the thing. Do you want to try cooking something? Mayako picked up one of the boiled corns we brought, brought, brought with us. I think we need more charcoal. The last time I tried this, it went out right away. <sighs> is that really the charcoals? Is that is it, is it really the charcoals that's the bling, though? Sonai's grill is working just fine. Sonai decided to be our chef for the day and started cooking rice at his canteen a bit further away. Oh, 
<sighs> Seriously? I turn around, my eyes meeting Sanai's. Is something wrong? You're using the same charcoal as me, right? I think so. I took it from there. She pointed at the charcoal bag by the cooler box. That really is the same one. Maybe the top got moist or something. Narasaki did the charcoal part for me. So maybe she knows how it works. Huh. When I returned to our bags to get some fresh charcoal and fire starter, Narasaki and Kozoi passed by me. The former was pulling the ladder by the hand. Where are you taking me? <laughs> Seems like it's going to take more time, so let's go for a quick swim in the meantime. I glanced over my shoulder and saw that the table we asked Kozue to handle had already been neatly set. The cups on the table even had our names on them. Um, you can go if you want. It'd be nice if you could prepare the kebab so I try to figure out how to get the fire started. See, right here we have five characters in the same scene with no name tags. I don't think this ever happened before in the entire story. Oh my god. I took out a skewer from the cooling box and showed it to them. The meat and vegetables are with Mayoko. Huh. Okay. Fine. Said Kozue, taking the skewer from me. I asked Narasaki to help me with the grill. When Narasaki rearranged the charcoal, it lit up in seconds. I see. So it's better to stack them vertically. Heat always rises up, so it's best to arrange the charcoal in a way that makes it easiest for it to travel. If you do it well enough, you don't even need to fan it. You're pretty knowledgeable about this stuff. I read it. I read about it in some book. I lined up the charcoal so I could better control the flame. Then put a wire gauze on the grill and try grilling one piece of meat. I could hear it sizzle. Ah! I let out an excited shout. I glanced at Mayako and Kozue preparing the kebabs. The grill's ready! Mayako nodded. She and Kozue then brought over the skewers. Zanai approached us as well, eager to watch. Well, let's start cooking then. Hey, wait a second! While I was contemplating how to best order the skewers on the grill to get them evenly roasted, Kozoe began grilling her kebab by herself. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, just so you know. Oh, okay, th that was Kozoe. What do you want? Just so you know, there's an unwritten rule in these parts that seniors get the first bite while the youngsters wait for their turn, so... Hey, are you even listening to me? <laughs> Kozoe put another kebab on the grill while I was talking. I've made one for everyone. This one's Mayoko's, and those are Narasaki's and Sanai's. This one's yours. <sniffs> By the time she finished, five kebabs had already been placed on the grill. They all had bite-sized pieces of sweet pepper, shiitake mushrooms, onions, chicken, and paprika skewered on them. They all seem to follow the same order, looking pretty colorful and nice. Now we're talking. Narasaki exclaimed. Kozui's kebabs, still on the wire gauze, looked and sounded amazing. Am I imagining this? Or is there almost no meat on my kebab compared to the others? Oh, wait. Is Kozue saying that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume. Am I imagining this? Or is there almost no meat on my kebab compared to the others? I put the same amount on all of them. Did you season them? 
Yes. Oh. Yes, with salt and pepper, said Mayako. Norisaki asked what everyone wanted to drink, then moved to the table and filled all our cups before bringing them back to us. After confirming it was cooked just right, I picked up my kebab. I gave everyone an eye signal and raised a toast. I bought these kebabs purely on a whim during a shopping trip, but it turned out to be a good decision. They tasted really good. After finishing my first one, I started putting one ingredient after another on my skewer pretty much randomly, eating as much as I could. The cheese fondue Mayoko made was also delicious. Out of nowhere, she placed some camembert cheese on an aluminum foil and melted it above the grill. I, fi I figured it was safe to call my first barbecue party in a long while a resounding success. Meat's done! I'd long since lost count of how many plates I sent to the others. When I was about to offer Mayoko another plate, she refused, claiming she'd already eaten more than enough. Clayton's song nice hand still looked almost completely packed with food. Kozue refused to, refused to eat anything else after filling herself with cheese fondue and was already on her way to the beach with Narasaki for another swim. She must have taken a liking to being pulled around on her floating ring. I played with her too, but I ended up pulling her too far from the shore. And we got swept away by a huge wave. Getting back to shore was quite the adventure. After that, she never let me near her floating ring ever again. <laughs> well, I guess I'll just eat through all the rest on my own then. I moved the onions and chicken to my own plate. See where the sun sets in the east. Inverse sea. That is that is so interesting. So it literally is like a reverse world. I see. I wonder, does the planet rotate the other way around the sun in that world? No, no, that wouldn't make that wouldn't make any difference. It would it wouldn't be the 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 basically the axis spinning out in the other direction. I'm pretty sure this is probably the end. We had one little happy funny scene and now it's time. The sea where the sun sets in the east. Hey, Mayoko. Ugh. I ate too much. I got a little carried away this time. This feeling of bitter regret made me remember the few times I visited an all-you-can-eat restaurant. I seriously overestimated my poor stomach's capacity. Are you okay? Mayoko brought me a drink. I'm... Feeling better. I took a sip from the water bottle she handed to me. I really was feeling better now, just like I'd said. Still, it didn't seem like I'd be able to do any swimming today. Where are all the others? At the beach, playing. I glanced toward the shoal in the distance and could make out three figures playing volleyball at the beach with what looked like my ball. 
Oh, they seem to be having fun. Maika smiled. Too bad you can't join them, huh? I'm just glad they got to enjoy this, at least. Coming to the sea this year was a good idea. I nodded in agreement. <laughs> Overseas trips are great, but sometimes the coolest places can be found right under your nose. I spent a few minutes gazing at the sea with Mayuko, then slowly stood up. Where are you going? Just for a walk. I feel like it might help my stomach. Want to join me? I'll look after the bags here. Okay. Anyway, I'll be off then. I began walking toward the shoreline. The soothing so... I, so? I, I don't think I've ever heard that word before. Of the waves and the pleasantly light breeze made me forget the heaviness of my stomach. It didn't take long to reach the end of the small beach. It was cut off by the protruding cape, forming a small cliff. The shallow reef at its bottom seemed to have continued all the way to the opposite shore. I looked behind me, but Mayako and the others were too far away for me to make out. Overtaken by a sudden adventurous impulse. I climbed down the little cliff and continued down the shallow reef toward the other side. My path grew wider the further I went. As I closed in on the cave, the waves began beating against its the waves be beating against its splash against my face. I gazed at the sea from that position. There was not a single soul in sight. I braced myself for another splash in the face, but no other big waves seemed to be coming. The only thing caressing my cheeks was the calm sea breeze. Suddenly, I felt like I spotted someone on the other side of the cape. My heart skipped feet when I saw the person in question. Don't do this to me. I swear. Don't do this to me! God damn it. God damn it! Seriously! <laughs> I 
A moment later, the person had already vanished. I blinked a few times. Must have been my eyes playing tricks on me. After spending some more time gazing at the beautiful scenery, I decided to make my way back to the others. Satoko would eventually cut the air. When she did, I had to be ready. After all, she did this all for me. I needed that so much. You have no idea how much I needed that. Seriously. You have no idea how much I needed that. No, that is definitely clapping, Jackie. CGs were, were on this page, weren't they? I went too far. Yep, it's right there. Oh my god, Jackie. I was, I was dead. I was dead. I was dead, but you brought me back to life one last time. And didn't kill me again afterward. Thank you so much. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. I, I just needed that little thing. I needed that one little thing. I needed that one little thing. Seriously. I, 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 geez. I needed that so much. The only thing I really don't understand is how how Ko's way was in Sachiko's world as well, but like that, like with the story overall, I just let's check out the other CGs. Oh, sorry. I here we go. Oh wow, it's more of their high school stuff. <laughs> no, I pretty much get everything else, Jackie. That's, uh, yeah. I pretty much get everything else. <laughs> oh, well. That's, yeah, th that is, yeah. The, the, the answer, uh, yeah, the, 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 the story did do a good job of answering most of my questions. Yeah. The, the last chapter, I mean. I, um, uh, but seriously, I, I, I don't think I can overstate 
how much I needed that final scene. I, I, I like, seriously. I... Uh, the tone I would be speaking in right now would be very different <laughs> without that final scene. It's true that, you know, the ending of something sticks with you, I think, the most. And, uh... Oh, good night, T. I hope you had a good time. And, uh... Really, I I needed that. I needed that so much. Oh my god, I just I I I I love the I love the CG, that's probably why I've been dwelling on it. Void. <laughs> See I can make puns too. I really love the way this looks. Uh, let's see. Oh, it just goes right back. Here's Office Narasaki. Different expressions, smiling, school sought to go, more beach CGs at the end. I wonder if that was going to be used in the ending. Mm. I, I used to have a shirt like that, that uh, like sought to go. Right there. I. And here we go. This is yeah. This is probably from the vacation. Oh! Oh my God! That's adorable. Yeah, here's the ending again. Oh! Oh, it's animated. I see. Here's the CG from the end. <laughs> Dan, Takako in this pose, I know I have this on the brain right now. Takako in this pose is reminding me a lot of Labby. And that's a very good thing. <laughs> Right, yeah, I, th I thought it was on the island. Yeah, thanks, Jackie. And yep, yeah, this is the one on the uh, Steam page. Or in Arasaki. She looks slightly different here. I think she, it looks like she's drawn in a slightly different style. There's some more Takako. And last but not least, oh damn, Sajiko. <laughs> I didn't realize, holy shit, jeez. Uh, dressing lightly. Yeah, is that like a beta design of Narasaki? She looks a bit different there. I think. I wonder. Okay. Okay, you guys. I, this, this was really, really good. 
Very sad. Very sad. But also very good. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I thoroughly was totally emotionally destroyed by it as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I really, I, I just, I gotta say, this. okay, you know what? I'll try to get my thoughts because I'm slowly, slowly regaining my composure. The characterization and the, 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 the scenes of them together were, were so on point. I, I loved those scenes so much. Like, normally you think in a visual novel, like, flashbacks and scenes of, like, you know, slice of life or whatever. It's like, yeah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Let me go through this. I want to get to the part where stuff happens. Like, I never once had that thought during the scene, the vacation scenes in Seabit. I don't know whether it's because of Takako reminded me of the person I'm married to, but um, I thoroughly enjoyed their interactions on the vacations and everything. And uh, I, I don't know, it, it just it just seems so realistic in a good in a very good way. I, I really hats off to y'all at Seabed team. Uh, Jackie. Look at the CG of Narasaki entering the inn and the CG of her in, at the incinerator. Let's see. And let's see if we're entering the inn. Yeah, Sachiko was wearing Narasaki's clothing on the train. Yeah, I do remember that. Yes. I do remember that. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Absolutely here, yeah. The, um... Well, you know what I mean, Dimitri. <laughs> you know what I mean. I just, uh... Yeah, this was great. The writing was fantastic. There are a few things that I, I don't, um... You know, I, I didn't... And I didn't get in the end, such as, uh... Again, like, why Kozoi was in Sachiko's world, but that's very minor. And let me tell you something. Just, like... See, the smallest things can make the biggest difference. And the final scene just made the world of difference to me. The world. Like, I needed that 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 sense of finality, that, that, that final word from Takako. I needed that. I, I need... You, you have no idea how much I needed that. That... that that, that that from Takako. Like, it, it, it pulled everything together for me. Just... Like, a lot of different things were going through my head before that moment. And I was like, oh my god. Like, oh god, is this is it? It's like, so they're never gonna see each other again? It's like, oh god. It's like, oh god. I was just so... Like, I was thinking, like, yeah, okay, they're happy, but, like, their relationship and everything. 
And, uh, yeah, I could, that, that meant the world. And, uh, you know, before we go, I said it before, so I won't dwell on it too much. Uh, the only criticism I really have is the lack of name tags. Other than that, fan-fucking-tastic. Heart-wrenchingly sad and beautifully realistic. The art is really, really lovely. Very serene. And, uh, I uh, especially I got I have to commend the background art as well like uh, a lot of the I think we were talking in CG like we actually had a debate in the chat whether some of those CG backgrounds were photos or not because they looked really good and the dreamlike ones totally fit with the atmosphere the ones with that are photo filters so yeah definitely hats off to the uh, art team for both the backgrounds and the characters. I just, uh, yeah, again, the only thing is the, the lack of name tags. I just, I, I don't, I don't want to be confused on who's saying what, especially in such, such a tightly written story where like every line matters. Like it could give a hint or a clue about something. But again, I had a great, despite my, 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 my heart shattering to pieces and, <laughs> and, and being put back together many, many times, not only throughout this entire story, but tonight as well, <laughs> I, uh, I, had, I, I, I had a, a great time. I, I had a great time reading this. Uh, next time on Thursday is not more seabed, but uh, Ever 17 by one of my favorite uh, visual novel creators, uh, Uchikoshi, the creator of the Zero Escape series. <laughs> so uh, I hope you look forward to that. Tomorrow is some more Witches in Woodlands. Which has been very uh, a lovely, hilarious time so far. So, you guys, I hope you had a good time. Until next time, I will say so long, farewell, love, we to Zane, good night. You are all the sweetest of hearts. See ya. <laughs>